Hey econ students, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to ACDC Econ. Let's play a quick game. I'm going to show you three graphs and even if you don't fully understand the concepts or the terms, let's see if you can spot what they all have in common, okay? There's the first graph, it's the federal funds rate. If you don't know what that is, it's okay. It's the rate that banks charge each other for overnight loans, and it's the target rate the Fed looks at when it's trying to decide what to do with monetary policy. Okay, let's move to the second graph. This shows you the excess reserves that commercial banks have deposited with the Fed. It's basically the amount of money that the banks can loan out but they're not, they're holding it in reserve. And the last graph actually shows two data sets. It shows the consumer price index, which shows you, you know, what's happening with inflation and also the money supply. In general, when you look at these graphs, do you notice anything? Well, in every single case, there's been dramatic changes, unprecedented changes since 2008. Right now, we're living in unique and unpredictable times. Interest rates have been extremely low. Banks aren't lending out very much money. They are holding a lot of money in reserves and there's this massive increase in the money supply, but we haven't seen very much inflation. So why, what is going on? Well, stick around to find out. Before I explain what's happening in the economy, let's cover some academic stuff, some things you might see in your econ class, specifically the concept of a liquidity trap. It's a trap. I'm assuming you've already learned the money market graph, but let me give you a quick refresher just so we're on the same page. The demand for money shows people's liquidity preference. And think of it this way, assume people can do one of two things when it comes to their money. They can either buy interest bearing assets like bonds and earn interest, or they can just hold it in cash. And so how do they decide what to do? Well, they look at the interest rate. And so when the interest rate is very high, then people wanna go buy bonds. They don't want very much money, so the coin demand's very low. And when the interest rate is really low, people might as well keep all their money in cash because why not? Since they're not getting a very high return on bonds, then they might as well keep all their assets liquid. And you've also learned that the supply of money is vertical and it's set by the central bank and together supply and demand set the nominal interest rate. And you've learned the idea of monetary policy when the Fed increases the money supply to decrease interest rates, to expand the economy, increase investment and consumer spending, right? But what happens when the interest rate fall really, really low? Well, the demand for money actually ends up looking like this. And what's that called? You guessed it, a liquidity trap. It's a trap. In this case, interest rates have fallen so low that people prefer to hold all their assets as liquid cash. And of course, your first thought is, who cares? Why does this matter? Well, you care. Other than just waiting it out, the government has two options when it comes to expanding the economy when there's a recession, fiscal policy and monetary policy. But a liquidity trap effectively removes the monetary policy option from the table. In other words, imagine if the US went to a recession today, right now, since the federal funds rate is already so low, near zero, it's unlikely that lowering the rates even lower will lead to more spending and more investment. And for many economists, having fewer options when it comes to stabilizing the economy is a serious problem. Let's go back and talk about what's happening in the economy today. Now, we know how we got here. During the 2008 financial crisis, the Fed significantly increased the money supply to lower interest rates, and that worked. For nearly a decade, interest rates have been at historic lows, but the banks aren't loaning out all that extra money. Remember this graph? Throughout modern history, banks have preferred having low excess reserves or no excess reserves since the only way to make more money is to lend out money and to charge interest. But as you can see, that's actually not happening now. In fact, excess reserves deposited with the Fed went from around $2 billion in 2008 to $2 trillion today. By the way, that means that that whole money multiplier that you've learned from your teacher actually is totally out of whack. In reality, the money multiplier today is less than one. In other words, when the Fed increases the money supply by buying $100 with the bonds, the only increase in money supply would actually only be $93, not more than $100. So yeah. Don't tell your teacher this, by the way, because that's gonna mess up their assignments and the tests they're gonna give you. We usually assume the money multiplier multiplies money, but that's not happening because the banks are holding it. But wait, why aren't banks just lending out that money? Well, it's complicated and I put an article from a Fed economist in the description below, but the quick answer is two things. 
Number one, the Federal Reserve now pays banks a really small interest rate for depositing their excess reserves. And number two, the interest rate that banks can earn on other low risk options like treasury bills or lending other banks is so low, it just makes more sense to just deposit the money with the Fed. It makes sense, but it's still unprecedented. These are not normal times. We've never seen this before. But believe it or not, that's not the weirdest thing happening in the economy right now. The weird thing is missing inflation. Again, if you're interested in learning more, I put an article in the description, but basically the idea is that all the models that economists look at and the quantity theory of money all say that an increased money supply will eventually lead to higher prices. We're gonna have more inflation, but in reality, that's not happening. That's not necessarily a bad thing since the US is seeing slow but steady growth, but it is weird that makes economists wonder if we're gonna have massive inflation in the future once banks start loaning out that money. So the US economy today reminds economists that real life sometimes looks a whole lot different than the textbook. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And of course, let me know in the comments below what you thought. Do you like this video? Do you want me to make more? And what do you want me to talk about, okay? Thanks again for watching. Till next time.